Hello, welcome to episode 7 of CMath Run. Today we're going to do something a little different. Thanks to Jenny for having the idea. Uh, we are now on, well I am now on Twitter. You can follow me at CMath Run. So Twitter at CMath Run. What we're going to do today is we're going to use the dynamic grapher as a teaching tool to teach transformations of equations, transformation of functions. I'm going to go in the dynamic grapher, which is 6. I'm going to get rid of anything that's currently there. We're going to start out with something simpler, something we can use with an Algebra 1 class the first time they're learning how to graph an equation or finding the relationship between the slope and the intercept of an equation. In the dynamic grapher, you can set up equations with different variables that will change and change dynamically. So what I want to do is I want to set up mx plus b. So what I do is just type in alpha m use the x theta key t key to get that x. Do not use these down here. These are different. Plus alpha b. What's really nice is the equation looks exactly like it would in the textbook. mx plus b. Slope and an intercept. Don't forget to hit execute otherwise it won't do anything. Now if I want to see it I press execute again because I want to do something. Right now it says you're looking at equation 1 dynamic variable is m, b, m. It's also got a set and a speed. So I'm going to currently select m. I'm going to set m so that it goes from negative 5 to 5 in steps of 1. To change any of those values, all you got to do is type in the value you want once it's highlighted. But I want to go from negative 5 to 5 in steps of 1. I will exit out of there. I'm going to set the speed to go fast. Let's press F4. So F4 will give me a fast play. Exit. And then I will hit dynamic. Now what the calculator is doing is it's calculating a couple of different slopes. And it's going to dynamically show them one at a time. It's going to do it fairly quickly. So here we go. It's showing the dynamic changes. Negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. At any time, if you want to stop, you press AC on. Press exit to go back. Now let's say I wanted to change B. I would press set. Now let me go back. I want to select B. So I want to select B. Well, let's set up B to change that. So it's set currently just the way we had M. And do dynamic. I'll show you how to change the window next. Just calculating a couple different ones. Now, make sure you ask students have a look at what's happening with the graph. The slope is not changing, but the intercept is changing. Jumping up one every time. Again, to stop it, press AC on. I had a pretty bad window that time, so I'm going to go all the way back to my graph window here, my dynamic function. I'm going to set up my view window. I'm going to start with the initial window. Exit there. Another thing I like to do with students at this point is when before they come into class, I'll do something like this. I'll type in 2x plus 1 as the equation. Now this is equation y20. So before they got into class, I have equation y20 here, and I currently have it deselected. So if I deselect it, they can't see it. So the dynamic exp explanation goes through, and then at some point, I'll pause the screen on the computer so they can't see what I'm doing. I'll come back here. I'll select this. I'll go back up to the beginning, and I'll say, okay, well, now, since you're getting pretty good at this, see if you can figure out what equation I'm looking at if I do something like this. I'll set, I'll select M, I'll set it, make sure it's ready to go. I'll hit dynamic. Now their challenge is going to be to match the graph they see in black with the moving graph they see in blue. Now they can only do it one at a time and it's up to you. You can show the, the video playing once where it will play this showing each one of the changes only once, and that's what I usually do. I say, all right, you think you know what each one does. When you think you know what it is, write it down, but it's only going to cycle once. 
So I'm ready to jump out of it at any time. There's M0, M of 1, M of 2, M of 3. By now most of them have gotten it. So press AC. I ask them to write down what they think the slope of the equation is. I'll go back. I'll go, okay, you think you know what M is. Let's see if you can figure out what B is. So I want to select B, execute. I want to make sure I select B. I had not selected B. And then I draw it. Let it dynamically animate again. Once they figure out what B is, I will ask the students to come up and set the equation for the dynamics so that it's exactly what we want it to be. Now remember, the slope is not exactly right. So I may ask them to put the slope in at the correct point and see if they can figure it out. But I think it's more challenging if you have the slope not be exactly right because then they're just concentrating on when is this intercept the number that I'm looking for. We know it's 1. Hopefully they will figure that out. Press AC to stop. So by now they have figured out that their equation should be 2x plus 1. So now I've got the color graph. So I could go 2x plus 1, execute that, and then I'm going to go up and deselect my dynamic one so that I don't have to worry about it showing me all these dynamics. Oh, I, did, I do need to have that one on, so I'll turn that one back on. Exit, and dynamically graph that one. Now they should see the red line right over the top of the black line if they did everything right. I'll show you another way you could do this also. The emulator is available on edu.casio.com. So right now, both lines are right over the top of the black, but you can't see it because the black superimposes it. Exit here. Go to Menu. Now, all the work we've done is saved into all the graphs. So if I go into 5, here's my graphs. I will select the red graph. And I'm going to ask the students to select. They won't be able to see it, but I'll select Y20, which, guess what? There it is. So when I draw it, they will see one line, the red first, and then the black. The other place you can do this is if you've got your equation set up, you can do what's called a modify in the graph menu. If you press modify, now it'll allow you to select a variable one at a time and animate it one piece at a time. So you selected it. So now it's modifying M. So I know M to be 2, so I'm going to press 2. Notice it shows me a yellow line for the one before. I know that B is 1. And again, all I'm doing is selecting. So there's all three of them. It, to show you what modify will do is when I press the over key, it moves my blue line over by steps of 0.5. So it's moving over in steps of a half if you wanted to go faster. Change your steps to 1 and move it in steps of 1. Step of 1, select, I want to change B, increase B, increase B. You can't do the guessing game on this one because when it graphs it shows you the equation that it's graphing. So I don't suggest you doing that little game in this area because it'll end up cheating and they'll be able to see it. You can do this for more complex functions. If you wanted to do more complex functions in the graph, you go into Tool, you go into F3 built-in, and there's your built-in array of different equations. In the dynamic grapher, that same menu is under the built-in. The built-in shows up right away, so it's under F5. And then you just select which one you want. If you want to do things in H and K form, you can select one of these and change your variables to be H and K or any of the variables you want, whatever your book uses. That is a little intro into how do you use this as a teaching tool. And I know there's a lot of people that are teaching 
transformation of functions either coming up very soon or currently doing it, especially with sine, cosine, and tangent. So this might be a good time to use that. Again, the emulator is available, edu.casio.com. Uh, this YouTube channel will be updating with more teacher trip tricks and teacher tips. It's also, we are, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can go Twitter at cmathrun or YouTube, cmathrun. I am taking requests, so if there's anybody who wants to request a video, how do you do something, anything at all, just let me know, and uh, you won't be too surprised if you see it on there. Thanks. Take care.